bit like today, folks. It's Paul here. How are you doing? It's Burns Night, or no Burns Night. It's, um, it's a few days before. This is the 22nd. We're doing our Burns Night special, number 45, live for the lounge. Um, good to be here, actually. It's, um, it's my favourite time of the year. I would normally be at the Peter Heed Burns Club Burns Supper. This would probably have been my 21st Burns Supper there. Um, and it's a it's one of these great shames about the, the lockdown, which is, I can completely agree with and understand, but it's a shame that things like this that have been going for so long um, have had to be cancelled because they're a great um, event, sense of community and bringing folk together. So um, it's actually, I think it's the third or fourth oldest Burns Club in the world. They've got something like a 15 year waiting list. So um, Peter Heed, a great club. And then uh, tomorrow, normally I'd be heading down to Chester, to the Chester. Caledonia Association. So tonight is marking up for missing bed these things and of course with Shona. Hello. Um, We've done a couple of burns things already this year. We have. Been yeah. sitting right here. Sitting of right here. We've been in Boston. Um, we, well I uh, virtually. Virtually. Virtually in Boston, in Boston we was and um, for the else you I did, did a, a burns night a 20 minute spot for the Aberdeen Folk Club on Wednesday. And I also did a, a wee performance for a Burns thing for doing in Glasgow for a for a school. Yeah. Doing and you recorded Tam Shanter as well. Yes, at I did. Oh, Kirk. Oh, it was sub zero temperature, so I went down to Tarl and <laughs> Kirk in the evening. And I have to say, I, I didn't quite get lulled as I normally would because, well, it was at night, it was after eight o'clock um, at night in Tarland. We needed to get a boot, and I thought I might hear hey, the bobbies turning up. So Aye, but the I boys toned it, there, I so. toned it down a wee bit, so, um, so we'll maybe get, get lulled in the night. So I hope you've so got your. I guess in your neeps and your tatties on the go. Alright. Where's this cooking? Well, it's cooked. It's cooked. But ready to roll. So, what right. we're going to do is we're going to just get cracking. It'll be a normal night. Fun and games. What's in the box? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. What's in the box? 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 <laughs> You're not going to learn a lot for that. I, I, I think I said last week, or, or one of the posts this week, it would be a Burns themed um, eh, what's in the box this week. So pitch in your guesses. We've also got Fitzy Fitz, Fusky. Fitz the, the hell's the drum this week? Again, unlikely you might get it, or you might, but I'm thinking I might have okay. foxed you this I'm week. I'm going to go and do my. And um, so, what we're going to do is, we, we, we said last week, We'll start off with the Haggis. So what I'm going to do is a, is, um, a way of welcome. I'm going to actually play a couple of Burns tunes and then we'll get cracking and we're going to go right into addressing the Haggis. And I hope you've got your Haggises hotter on the pan. If you have, go and get them off while I play these first two tunes. I'm going to play two tunes, Burns songs, um, but he used a lot of fiddle tunes. So most of the tunes I'm playing are Burns songs, but they're actually, they were fiddle tunes first. So I'm going to play Corn Rigs for a start and then we're going to follow that wee Blythe Hey I Been on Yon Hill. Oh, things in my wife. <laughs>
there okay. you go. So a couple of reels to get this going. Um, I'm not going to do any bits and pieces yet until we've got this harvest ready. We've got the chef just turning up. Yes, I've got a good few hellos. I'm not even halfway can, through can, them. Can we leave him just now until I do this? Oh, okay. And then we'll get the harvest out of the road. Okay. And then I'll let Roddy off. Okay, I'll catch up with all my stuff then. So okay. I'm sure a lot of you have been to Bourne Suppers, but a lot of you probably haven't been. Um, for the sake of what we're doing here, I'm not going to stand up, but normally you would stand up and clap your hands as the haggis was coming in, carried by the chef and piped in. That's a fairly typical kind of procedure for a Bourne Supper. So, what you normally hear is a man's a man for all that. Thank you, Chef. If you could put this okay. down here, Roderick's going to sit there while I recite this. And um, as you can see, he's been a busy boy here. Look, look at that haggis. It's a proper haggis with a skin, and it comes from Sheridan's in Balatar. So it's a, a royally appointed haggis, this I think you'll find. So, what anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the address to that haggis. Fair fat, your honest sonsy face, great chieftain, o oh, the puddin' race, a bean am I, you tack your place, pinch, tripe, or firm. Weel are you worthy o' oh, a grace, as long's my arm. The groaning trencher, there you, you fill, your hurdies, like a distant hill, your pin would help to mend a mill in time of need. While well, through your pores the dews distill like amber bead. His knife, say rustic, labour dicht, and cut you up with ready slicht, trenching your gushing entrails bricht like on a ditch, and then oh, what a glorious sight! Warm, reeking, and rich. Then horn for horn they stretch and stride, deal to the hen most on they drive to lie their wheel swelled kites, but alive, I bent like drums. And then I'll weed my miss like to arrive, <laughs> but thank it hums. It's there the tower his French ragout, or oleo twould star a sou, or fricassee twould mark a spew, with perfect scunner. Looks down with sneering scorn for view on sick a dinner. Peer devil. His feckless, as a withered rash, his spinal shank, a gweed whip lash, his niv a nit through bloody flood or field to dash, oh, how unfit. But mark the rustic, haggis fed, the trembling earth resounds his tread. Clapping his willy nave a blade, and he'll make it whistle, and arms and legs and heeds he'll sned, like tops of thistles. Ye powers, will mark mankind their care, and dish him up their bill of fare. Old Scotland wants nae jopin', eh, skinkin' ware that jopes and lies. But if you wish, are great for prayer, gee her. A haggis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And there's a few folk asking if the chef's getting a dram. No, no. but um, his father is. So there we go. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying well done, Roddy. Yeah. The Anderson's Kitchen sous chef, Roddy. So, Roderick, you're going to take a suit while I play a toot and you'll take oh. a bit in the kitchen and you can help yourself if you want a bit. So, thank you, Roddy. Haggis has departed to a brutal end where it gets ripped to bits by hungry Scotsmen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Haggis is actually um, first mentioned in the 15th century in Scotland. So it's got a very long pedigree. Um, that said, there are dishes very like it are over Europe and probably further afield. Um, I'm not going to go through all the ingredients, but well, I will. It's, um, 
Mutton would be the main thing with uh, barley and oatmeal, spices, but then they've also got things like heart, the heart, uh, lungs, kidney, liver, that sort of stuff. They're awful. I mean, it was the, the way that folk didn't waste a single morsel of that on the animal. You used a lot. One of them was edible, got eaten. So um, it was then put into a sheep's stomach. And the folk um, sometimes go, oh, a sheep's stomach, but well, we have sausages. Even now you've got sausages that are in, that are in uh, skins made of intestines. So um, it's it's perfectly all right in this. I, I think it tastes great. You put a wee bit of spice in it. Um, and oh, nobody can mark it, because I've certainly my granny used to mark them. Nay in a skin, but she would cook them up kind of loose and um, just taste exactly like the butchers. Um, when I said that you get them other places, I mean, that, the similar dishes were mentioned by Homer. Homer, the writer of the Iliad and um, Ulysses. Um, or no, is it Odysseus? Um, you kind of see your Troy. So yeah. it's going way, way back, Greek historian. The father of history, so that's gone well back. And actually, um, well, it's near last year now, but 1919, when I was out in Sweden, um, doing a wee tour with Peter Hedlund. It is a 19, May 1919. Is that what I said? Yeah. You can if that mean, two a year ago. Um, Peter prepared a Swedish dish, dish called pulsa. And pulsa is, for our intensive purposes, basically just exactly like um, haggis, it's a, it's a bit weaker. It's, it's a bit more like mince, I would say, in its consistency. So it's not quite as dry as haggis. But, um, so there's a similar thing I would have placed, and I've heard them say that it was introduced to Scotland for France, which I'd be prepared to believe, but ask Kieran to our national dish, and it tastes wonderful. So <laughs> I'm going to play a set of tunes now. Can you come in and... Hi, that's a good idea. Shona's going to come in and update you. I have got... A mega list because we've got over a hundred folk watching the night, which that is looks like brilliant. A Twenty thousand folk, <laughs> including what, what's that? Bernie Sanders is there, and Al Pacino. So we're having a good night. Bernie Sanders is sitting with his mitt, uh, mittens on. Sitting in the corner. <laughs> okay, so a lot of hellos. Harry Lash is watching. Octavio Dangel, Maureen, uh, Doreen, Melvin, and Callum Wood down in Glasgow. Laura Bach, one of our regulars in Pennsylvania. Leah Roswell, another regular, and uh, Ulla in Stockholm as well. Shirley and John Fuchs, Oren Skeen have got their haggis, they are ticking in. Kim Harris is in a snowy Nova Scotia watching us, Daria and Gordon Muir at the other side of Darland. Tommy and Sonia, Uncle Tommy's watching out in Huntley with Sonia, but they're here in an Indian the night and they're saving their haggis for later on. You traitor! <laughs> Tracy and Eric Walker are watching for uh, Kalerly, Margaret Anthony for Virginia, Heather Morrison's joining us, Anne and Paul, Oren Lomfanen, they've got their haggis, she sent me a picture, they're sitting... Uh, Good. <laughs> their haggis. Gordon Calder and Bonnie Whitney has had his haggis he's and he's a, now sitting here in a pint. He couldn't have waited. He just right. couldn't have had it. So delicious. <laughs> couldn't have had back for it. Katrina Lawson is watching in Methlick. Uh, Karen Fraser and Clan are joining us. Andrew Brandy is in Lawrence Kirk watching. Sandy Thompson in Dingwall. He says, home of the famous Coburn's haggis. I've never had it, so I'll look forward to that. Well, well, sounds like it could be good. We'll have to try it sometime. Yeah. Uh, Grace and Matt, my mum and dad in Huntley. Uh, Margaret Kerr in Australia. Sue Taylor in Orkney. She's here in fish and chips tonight. Thought you might have had a haggis supper. Oh, Burns come for Orkney, it would be <laughs> fish and chips he would be eating. Yeah. It. Shona Robertson and co doing in the Aberdeen Arms are joining us. Uh, your mum and dad, yep. up the head of the hill. Ian and Norma Russell. Tracy and Hugh Adelsey, another couple of regulars. Uh, Ted Kramar, doing in Northumberland. Francie and Anne in Hoth. Bruno Gougier from Dijon. Fiona and David Gardner in Tane. Malcolm and Pamela White in Mintloss Station. Uh, Alistair McDougall is... Actually, Malcolm... <laughs> I would be possibly sitting right beside Malcolm tonight because he's one of the chaps that does stuff at the Peter Heed Burns Club, Burns Supper in the Palace Hotel, okay. and we have shared money, a top table, and he's an excellent a reciter of uh, Burns himself, including his epic Tama Shanter. Right. He'd me hear me about that later, maybe. <laughs> Isabel Lane is watching in our guy. Uh, Elizabeth McMillan in Ottawa. Frank Ribbons and Lorraine Oren Aboyne. Uh, Sally Day Butler's joining us. Morag and Robin Dempsey. Faye Doon in the Borders. Aya Akayama is uh, watching from Japan. Hey. Uh, Jane Roberts is watching. Alan and Rona Taylor in Afford. Hey! Hey! <laughs> you get a hoof for that now. Uh, Joe and Bat getting you hey. Alison McDonald from the San Francisco Bay Area. Hey, up at 49 hours. So there, that was a long list this week. <laughs> Um, so I suspect if we did this on Monday it would probably be never very busy because there's loads of big 
online burn suppers happening. So the, the fact that we did this on a Friday is maybe worked out before kind of got burn saturations. So um, so nice to see you on a white. Now, as I said, I was getting to play a medley of tunes. Um, the first thing is called La the Earth So Wind Can Blah, and that's followed by Lizzy Lindsay, Duncan Davidson, um, and then my love, she's but a lassie yet. And um, the first thing actually is a, a tune by William Marshall, the fiddle composer. It was a, originally a slow strispe card, uh, Lady Admiral Gordon. And I think she'd been in Bump for Bucky or something like that in, in her real life. Not that you're probably very interested about her, but anyway, uh, Burns, like an awful lot of his, his songs, he, he set his lyrics to other folks' music. He never wrote a single melody that I'm aware of. Um, somebody might come up with something, but I've never heard on BC he wrote anything. But um, he had a great year for matching up lyrics with music. So anyway, here we go. <laughs>
notifications. Put some notifications. Pop up the boxes. <laughs> uh, so, hello to Dougie Hay. Uh, he's joining us tonight. Liz and Roger Court in Lincolnshire. Uh, Malcolm and Mary Duff are watching. Bruce Robertson Smith for Hell's Kitchen, New York's oh, joining Bruce, us. Bruce, how are you doing? Bruce can play the fiddle while doing the tightrope. I met him at Spayfest. Well, I think it might be the first year of Spayfest. Sorry, it just That's popped into my head. <laughs> it's amazing to see you. Bruce is a great guy. Um, that's all I'm going to say about him because I'd be telling tales. But he's a, <laughs> I really like Bruce. He's a top, top row of bloke. I've been trying to persuade him to emigrate while, while Trump was in power. I think he was getting depressed. But, um, no, but he's, he's, never, he's never come yet. But um, we'll see him one of these days, hopefully. Uh, Rona and Charlie doing in the village are watching. Elaine and George Mitchell watching the night. Uh, I'm presuming Elaine's in the back of Benners and George is in Aberdeen. Kate and Jim for Logie. They're saving their haggis for... Uh, for another night because they're having a Zoom with their daughter and their grandson who by just outside Newcastle. Mm -hmm. So they're here in the rain and Abdi's got to do a party piece. And <laughs> Catherine McLaughlin is joining us for the Portament Teeth and she's yeah. hearing Simon Howie hug us later on. Oh, well, it should be good. I mean, yeah. it should be good, Simon. So, um... What's in the box? 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 It's in the box. Right, Daria Muir thinks a mini buster Robert Burns. Andrew Brandy thinks a Robert Burns fridge magnet. Hugh Ad Adelsey thinks an alabaster bust of the bard. Uh, Alan Taylor thinks a tatty. As does Sandy Thompson. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I Please think it's the dull, dull thud <laughs> which the sound of the box is emanating. Um, uh, Uncle Tommy thinks a sleek it wee moosey. Uh, <laughs> as does Hugh Adelsey. And Catherine McLaughlin thinks something cardboard. Katrina Lawson thinks a mouse as well, and Elizabeth McMillan thinks a neep. Okay. The whiskey. Do you want to hold it up? Oh, right. whiskey? It up. Okay, so Harry Lash thinks Robert mm. Burns whiskey or, or Isle of Arran. It's got a citrus and floral notes coming through there, folks. Okay, it's whiskey. Uh, Alan oh, Taylor yeah. thinks Arran. Uncle Tony thinks Lagavulin. Sandy Thompson thinks Cutty Sark, which would be a good one. Yeah, I and can see why you're going with that. Catherine McLaughlin thinks Talisker. Well, you're all wrong, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely thought everybody's going to get this in it, but there you go. Right, I'm going to play two tunes just to finish um, this spot, and then we're back again, obviously, later. But, um, this first tune's a special request, and this is for a pal for Peter Reid. Now, I would have been dining with him the night at some point, or at the very least, maybe in the same table, but we would have probably had a drama and a news at some point. But this is for Jake, up at the Peter Reid Burns Club, and um, he requested, he got in touch and he asked if it would be a fond kiss, or he asked if Shona would do it, but she's not doing it because she's done it. She thought maybe three times. I think two or three times. Year. Again, it's a favourite of George Mitchell's. Aye, right, two or three times. So I'm going to play it in the fiddle. I wasn't going to do it, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it for, for just for you, Jake. And then we'll finish with, if it ever comes out in my head, but it might be a waltz. So we'll see.
that was um, after a for kiss was car the yows and then you bucks and brace. Um, a for kiss actually Burns wrote that for his Clarinda, who was Nancy Mucklehose. Um, I think that they were genuinely in love, but there was nothing physical ever happened. Um, they communicated through letters and they gave each other pen names. So Burns was Sylvander and um, Nancy was um, Clarinda. Clarinda. And um, he ended up being a leader. Could, trouble was she was married. You see, that was a bit of a spanner in Burns' works. And um, she was part of the reason <laughs> he, he thought about emigrating to the, to the Caribbean, actually be a, an overseer on a plantation, which he thought better Owen changed his mind, which is a good thing, um, I think, for his reputation. But there you go. So anyway, there, there we have it. There's a few Burns tunes. Fit about some songs. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Shona Donaldson. I'm going to um, do, do you have the notifications just now and now. Okay. Uh, right, so, Paul, can I maybe move this table out the road? Is that okay? Yeah. Just, just uh, now? Yeah, that's just fine. Just put it there that's just now. Can you maybe put that stuff up on there? Uh, so, we have got Germany, Germany? Jeremy Kingsbury. We've got Germany. No, I kind of, my moves not work in the day. Jeremy Kingsbury is joining us for Iowa. Uh, Mike and Sarah Brown are watching in a boyne. Drew uh, Edmiston is from Edmonton, Alberta. He's watching. Uh, Bonnie is joining us from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Susan Hurst from oh! Oklahoma. It's also Susan's birthday weekend as well. Oh. Um, so, but also, it was Shona Robertson's birthday this week as well from the Aberdeen Arms. So, let's yeah. sing happy birthday to Shona and Susan. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. is watching from Cheshire. I'll give you that bit of paper. We've had quite a lot of guesses for the box and the whiskies. So Isabel Lane thinks a sugar mouse in the box. Shirley Fuchs thinks a pin to mend a mill. Just a good guess. Uh, Sandy White thinks about a peat. Nicola Mitchell a reed reed rose. Andrew Brandy thinks a tatty. Margaret Anthony thinks a rose as well. Ian Russell thinks a Burns medal from Paul's youth. Uh, Jim Taylor thinks the cork for the bottle of whiskey. Kim Harris thinks a wee belt buckle. Rona thinks there's a box in the box. Uh, Jamie Bowers thinks a neep, as does Jack Taylor. And Alison McDonald thinks a Robert Burns paperweight. And the whiskey, I'm going to hud it up. It's actually, it smells quite nice. Yeah, Is it it's safe, floral and um, fruity notes. Okay. Tropical oh, fruity notes, I would say. Okay, so Sarah Brown thinks it might be Jura. Bruno thinks Glen Fiddich. Sandy White, Glen Keith. Isabel Lang thinks it might be Sheep Dip. Uh, Jack Taylor thinks Tom and Dole. Shirley thinks Timorous Beastie. Sandy Thompson thinks Glen Morangy. I prefer it to Quantrill, which I find too. Orangey. Okay. Uh, Joe Aitken thinks Fetter Cairn. And Catherine Brown thinks Glen Fatless. Okie dokie. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to do an extra song the night. I usually only do four, but you're getting five from me because I couldn't decide fit to do. Because there's actually just so many Burns songs that you, songs that you could do. Um, they're all brilliant. So I thought I would do one extra. Um, and if you were part of the Aberdeen Folk Club one, I'm really sorry, but you're hearing the same ones again. Well, no, you're getting an extra one. And, and the same with the Boston lot. I'm just going to grab my fiddle. And get the starting notes. Yeah, you might want to move. There's no yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, I'm going to sing a song which was first printed in Burns's Kilmarnock edition in 1786. And it's um, a song uh, called Composed in August, or it's Can I Better Kent as Westland Winds. So, I'll give us a bash. No Westland winds and slaughtering guns Bring autumn's pleasant weather The moorcock springs on wedding wings Among the blooming heather Now waving green white o'er the plain Delights the weary farmer and the moon shines bright as I rove at night 
the muse upon my charmer and the pet is the fruitful fells and the pull is the mountains the woodcock haunts the lonely dells and the soaring hen the fountains through lofty groves the cushion the The hazel bush old hangs a thrush, the spreading thorn, the linnet. And thus every kind that pleasure find, the savage and the tender, some social join and leagues combine, some solitary wander. Avant with a cruel sway, tyrannic man's dominion. The sportsman's joy, the murdering cry, the flattering gory pen. But Peggy dear, the evening's clear, thick flies, the skimming swallow. The sky is blue, our fields in view all fading, green and yellow. Come let us stray our gladsome way, and view the charms of nature. The rustling cold of rooted thorn and delk a happy creature will gently walk and sweetly talk while the silent moon shines clearly. I'll clasp thy waist and fondly pressed, swear how I love thee dearly. Not for no shells to budding flowers, not autumn to the farmer, so dear can be as thou to me, my fair, my lovely Charmer. There we go. Bonnie song. It's a beautiful song, actually. I love the tune for it as well. Um, so, Westland Wings. I'm going to do a call cool Rissy one. Have you got any notifications? Um, hi, Alison McDonald, the San Francisco Bay area, mm -hmm. says uh, McMira for, for a whiskey. I've never right. heard of that. Um, I'm not sure what that is. But nope. Uh, Dougie Hay thinks it's Aaron. Uh, Rona felt the talent thinks it's Aber Lauer. Okay. Um, we had a hello for Jean Hurdle, oh, hello, who's Jean. in San Antonio in Texas. Oh, cool. And I did an album with her. You did? Husband yeah. and I, uh, a few years ago. Um, Andrew Brandy thinks it's 26 year old McCallan. Very specific. George and Mary Patson are saving their huggis for, for Monday. Quite right. And Gillian Needham thinks um, it's a mini huggis in the box. And the whiskey is Achintoshin. Well, I just thought uh, I just saw that John Fuchs thinks it's Achintoshin, and in the box is an ear tag for Haggis, and Fiona Gardner thinks Ben Bracken. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's it. Okay, I'm going to do a chorus of song. I think I've done this one in uh, Life in the Lounge before, actually. Um, but I'm sure you'll laugh, can it? You'll hate to join in. Uh, get up and hook about your living rooms or your kitchens, wherever you are. Uh, so this is actually an old street song from the mid-1770s, which burns... Uh, adapted to a Jacobite theme, uh, as as you might well know, Burns collected a lot of songs. Um, in fact, I think he spent more of his life collecting folk songs than he did actually writing. Um, so this is one that he adapted. So this is Charlie, he's my darling. <clears throat> Twas on a Monday morning, right early in the Charlie came to your town, the young chevalier, and 
Charlie's my darling, my darling, my darling. Charlie's my darling, the young Chevalier. As he was walking up the street, the city for to view. Oh, there he spied a bonny lass, the windy looking through. And Charlie, he's my darling, my darling, my darling. Charlie, he's my darling, the young chevalier. Say, like, he's jumped up the stairs and tattled at the pen. And was ready as herself to let the laddie in. And Charlie, he's my darling, my darling, my darling. Charlie, he's my darling, the young chevalier. He set his jenny on his knee, all in his highland dress. For brawly will he kent the why to please a bonny lass. And Charlie, he's my darling, my darling, my darling. Charlie, he's my darling, the young chevalier. It's up yon heavy mountains and down yon scroggy glen. We darna gang a milkin. For Charlie and all his men. And Charlie, he's my darling, my darling, my darling. Charlie, he's my darling, the young Chevalier. And Charlie, he's my darling, my darling, my darling. Charlie is my darling, the young Chevalier. Whoa! Remember the boys used to sing the young chandelier? Yeah, J and D Roberts said exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but a few one or two things come in, it's trying to try to keep don't worry. Yep. But Ben and Daniel Lumsden from Melbourne are saying hello. Oh hello, Lumsden family. Possibly him haggis for breakfast if you were there. <laughs> uh, Frank Ribbons, he thinks Rob Roy whiskey, Tesco best, I think. And he also thinks it could be a garter or a kilt pin okay. in the box. Um, Odd, is it Odd Lee Gwen from Gala yep. mm -hmm. says hello. Hello. Really enjoying it. And Anne Wyatt thinks, is it Dalla Ruin? Okay, I think Obviously. that was Paul's guess, wasn't it? Was it? Okay. I think so. And uh, Dougie Hay thinks maybe a Dolphud in the box, and maybe, or maybe a, a, a Neep Haukadaf. A Dolphud. So I'm going to sing one more song. This is a song, sorry, Paul, sorry, that um, I did say I was doing yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're on again. I, I thought yeah. you No, I'm uh, going to sing one more just now. This is a song that Paul's been on it missing for a while and Hannah Dean it. And I can't believe we've actually gotten to 45 and I Hannah Dean it. Um, this is a song called The Highland Widow's Lament. And it was probably one of the very first. Scots songs that I ever sang in public actually. I can remember when I was in third year at school, so maybe about 15, 14, 15 year old, um, I entered the uh, Gordon School's music competition and I came third place for singing The Highland Widow's Lament. So um, yeah, I don't know why I don't really sing it more. I know it's one of your favourites, Paul. Um, well, I it was, is you singing it. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 Nobody else, just me. Um, I was really lucky. I was. I was just thinking back. Kind of one of the last gigs that I had before we locked down last year. I was really lucky enough to sing in the concert hall in Glasgow with the Scottish Symphony Orchestra uh, for a Burns celebration as part of Celtic Connections. And this is uh, one of the songs that I sang for that. And I must say it was quite something singing it with a full orchestra behind you. But I'm just gonna hate to be doing myself the night. I'm afraid. I was in Peterhead. Paul was in Peterhead, so he couldn't come. But uh, it's alright, I'll let him off. So <clears throat> this is the Highland Widow's Lament, and again, it's a, a song, uh, a, a, a Jacobite song, I suppose, from a woman's point of view, which um, Burns actually wrote a lot from the female perspective. Uh, so I'm going to sing this one. Oh, I am come to the low country. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, With a penny in my purse To buy a meal to It was no say in the hill and hills Oh, come, oh, come, oh, Say, 
happy was as me. For that I had a skorukai, o khonu khonu kri, fidan hon yan hau se hai, an ki han nauk te mi. For that I had three skoru yaus, o khonu khonu I was the happiest of all the clan. Ser ser me ahiri pain. For Donald was a happiest man, and Donald he was mine. Till Charlie Stewart come at last. Se far te set us free. My Donald's Adam was needed then for Scotland and for me. There were who fed what need I tell. Right to the wrong day, my Donald and his country fell upon Culloden Field. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, no, Donald, oh, oh, no, oh, no. Wretched now as me. <clears throat> that was quite high. I didn't realise how high that was going to be. Ooh. One of my favourites, sir. Good. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll right. put you back on to bowl then. Okay. We'll swap. We'll be a swabby. Let's get on you go. Right. Okay. Okay. Now you might think it's a bit much. Look at him. He's got a he's got a pint and he's got a drum. But this is this is actually a prop. Can see you. Um, this is a prop. Look, here's a glass and here is the pint. I'm just realising what's happened here. This woman's parked the front for normal. I think this is looking in the wrong court. Thanks. Sorry. No, no, it's alright. I was wondering why I kept, kept looking off the side of the camera. Right. See that? Look at that now. Only problem is, it's not quite the right kind of bonnet. This is a bull model. Um, and it should be blue, but it's going to serve a useful purpose because I'm going to want to do Tam O'Shanter. A tale. Robert Burns is probably his most famous poem, actually. It's um, when he wrote kind of late in life and he was actually really rather sick. And um, I think he was drawn upon folk tales and ghosty stories he heard as a youngster. Um, he used to hear a lot of tales to keep the kids occupied um, when they were younger. Um, in Scotland, it's like, I suppose every country, has loads of folklore and history and um, tales of ghosts and ghouls and goblins and fairy folk and all that sort of thing. So Scotland's got lots of that and so Burns' mind was obviously filled with all this when he, he wrote Thomas Shanter. And, um, I'm just going to recite it. Um, here we go. As Chapman Billy's leave the street and Druthy neighbours neighbours meet. For market days are wearing late and folk begin to talk the gate. As we sit boozing at the nappy and getting foo and unker happy, we think now in the long Scots miles, the mosses, waters, slaps and styles that lie atween us in our heme, for sits, our sulky, sullen dame, gathering our brews like gathering storms, 
and nursing her wrath to keep it warm. This truth found honest Thomas Shanter, as he for air a nichted canter, all day from near a town surpasses for honest men and bonny lasses. Ah, oh, Tom, hadst thou but been so wise, and teen thy ain wife Kate's advice, she tilt the wheel, thou was a skellum, a blethering, blustering, drunken blellum, that fay November till October, a market nicht, thou was na sober. That ilky melder with the miller thou drunk as long as thou had siller, that ilky neg was cad a shoe on, the smith and thee got a roaring foo on. That in the Lord's house, even on Sunday, thou drunk with Captain Jean till Monday, she prophesied that late or soon thou would be found deep drowned in dune, or catch the warlocks in the mack by Alloway's old haunted kirk. Ah, the gentle dames, it gars me greet, to think how many counsels sweet, how many lengthened sage advices the husband for the wife despises. But to my tale. A market next, Tom had got planted, onka recht, fast by an angle, bleezing finely, where Raymond swats that drunk divinely. At his elbow, suitor Johnny, his ancient, trusty, druthy crony, Tom looed him like a very brother, they had been foo for works together. The night drave on with songs and clatter, and I the ale was getting better, the lad landlady and Tom grew gracious with favours secret, sweet and precious. The suitor told his queerest stories, the landlord's laugh was ready chorus, the storm without could rear and rustle, Tom didn't mind the storm a whistle. Care, mad to see a man so happy, he drooped himself among the nappy. His bees flew him with lades of treasure, the minutes winged their way with pleasure. Kings might be blessed, but Tom was glorious. How are the ills are life victorious? But pleasures are like the poppy spread. You seize the flower, its bloom is shed, or like the snowfall in the river, a moment white, then melts forever. Or like the borealis race that flipped, or you can point its place, or like the rainbow's lovely form, it vanishing amidst the storm. No man can tether time nor tide, the hour approaches, tam and ride. That hour o' next black arch this keystain, that dreary hour he mounts his beast in, and sick a nicht he tacks the road in, his napier sinner was a broaden. The wind blew as twid blats last, the rattling showers rose on the blast, the speedy gleams the darkness swallowed, loud, deep and long the thunder bellowed, that night a child might understand, the deal had business on his hand. Wheel mounted on his grey mare Meg, a bitter never lifted leg, Tom scalp it on through dub and mire, despising wind and rain and fire, Whiles had and fast his great blue bonnet, Whiles crooning o'er some old Scots sonnet, And whiles glowering room with prudent care. Lest bogles catch him on a wares, Kirk Alloway was drawing nigh, For guests and hoolets nightly cry. But now Tom had crossed the ford, For in the snaw the chapman smored, And passed the bucks and muckle stain, For drunken Charlie Brack's neck been, and through the winds and near the cairn, for hunters found the murdered bairn, and near the thorn had been the well, for Mungo's mither hanged herself. Before him, Dune pours a his floods, the doubling storm roars through the woods, the, light, the lightnings flash from pole to pole, the, um, near, and near and more near the thunders roll, when glimmering, through the groaning trees, Kirk Galloway seemed in a blaze. Through Ilka Boar the beams were glancing, and loud resounded, mirth and dancing. 
inspiring, bold John Barleycorn. What dangers thou canst make us scorn, we top nae bit, we fear nae evil, we Oscar would face the devil, the slats are aimed in Tommy's noddle, fair play, he cared na deal a bodle. But Muggy stood, recht fair astonished, till by the hand and heel admonished, she ventured forward on a licht, and wow, tas Tom saw an uncasicht. Warlocks and witches in a dance. Naked Italians, brent new for France, but hornpipes, jigs, straspays and reels put life and metal in their heels. A winnock bunker in the east, and there sat old Nick in shape a beast, a towsy tyke, black, grim and large, to give them music was his charge, and he screwed the pipes and guard them skirl till roof and rafter had the dirl. Coffins stood ruin, like open presses, which showed the deed in their last dresses, and which by some devilish cantrip slicht, each in his call hand held a licht, by which heroic Tom was able to note upon the holy table. A murderer's beans and gibbet irons, Twa span lang we on crescent bairns, a thief new cut it for the rape with his last gasp, his garb did gape. Five tomahawks we blood red rusted, five scimitars we murder crusted, a garter that a babe had strangled, a knife a feather's throat had mangled, his ain son o life bereft, the grey hairs yet stuck to the heft. We mere, who bath horrible enough, of which even to tell would be on laugher. Now, as Tommy glowered, amazed and curious, the mirth and fun grew fast and furious. The piper loud and louder blew, the dancers quick and quicker flew, they reeled, they set, they crossed, they click it, till Ilka Carlin swat and reek it, and cushed her duddies to the work, and link it at in it in her sack. Now, had they been queens, ah, plump and strapping in their teens, their sarks, instead of creasy flannin, been snow white seventeen hundred linen. The bricks are mine, my only pair, the ain'ts were plush, a guid blue hair, I would have gain him off my birdies, my hurdies, for a blink of the bonny birdies. But withered beldams howled and drow, ring woody hogs twould spin a foe, a lumpin' and flingin' on a crummock, it's a wonder it didn't turn thy stomach. But Tommy kent what was wet for brawly, there was a winsome wench and wally, that nicht enlisted in the core, long after kent on Carrick shore, for money a beast to deed she shot, and perished money a bonny boat, and shook Beth Mickle corn and bear and kept the countryside in fear. Her cutty sark, O oh Paisley Harn, that while a lassie she had worn, in longitude, though sorely scanty, it was her best, and she was vaunty. Aye, little kent thy reverend granny, the sark she cuffed for her wee nanny, with twa pound scots, was a her riches, would ever grace. A dance of witches. But here my news her wingman cower, Sick flights are far beyond her power, To sing how nanny lap and flung, She was a supple jade and strong, And how Tom stood like e'en bewitched, And thought his very e'en enriched. Even Satan glowered and forged through fane, And hodged and blew with might and main, Till first they caper, sign another, Tom tint his raisin a together and shouts out, Well done, Cutty Sark! And in an instant, all was dark. And scarcely had Tom Muggy rallied, fin out the hellish legion sallied, as bees biz out wi angry fike when plundering herds assail their bike, as open pussy's mortal foes when pop she starts before their nose, as eager runs the market crowd when catch the thief resounds aloud. So Muggy runs, the witches follow, 
with money and the eldritch screech and hollow. Ah, oh, Tom, ah, oh, Tom, now they'll get thy fairin, and hell they'll roast you like a heron. In vain thy Kate awaits thy coming, Kate soon will be a wolf a woman. Now, do thy speedy utmost, Meg, and win the keys to near the brig. There at them thy tail may toss, I did it, a running stream the deer and the cross. But they have a keystone she could make, and faint the tail she had to shake for nanny. Far before the rest, hard on noble Maggie pressed, and she flew at Tom with furious ettle. But little was she Maggie's metal. A spring brought off her mester hail, but left a hen, her ain great dark tail. The carlin clutched her by the rump, and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. Now, while I'm this tale of truth may read, each man and mother's son took heed. If to drink you are inclined, or cut a sacks run in your mind, think, ye you may buy the joys our dear. Remember, Thomas Shanter's mare. That was an epic. That wasn't too bad. That was an epic. Mare less got through it. So, well, I'm going to take a drum now, look yeah. at that. I was just going to come in and, and show you. Um, Laura Lai, one of our regulars, sent me a photo yesterday. She's all dressed up for tonight. I don't know if you can see her. There she goes. Yeah, she's got her tartan on oh, and everything. Laura Lai. Laura Lai. And uh, I might show another one later on if my phone's charged up enough. Good. Right. Time for a couple of more songs after that. I need to go and um, rest my weary <laughs> bow. I'm... Oh, oh. Joe Aitken says he's never heard it better. I didn't believe you. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I can't make an all right, an all right job, but I mean, there's definitely, um, you hear lots of different um, kind of ways of doing it. You sometimes hear folk that just rattle through it in monotone, like um, when Jumping Billy's Leave the Street and Dorothy Neighbours Neighbours Meet. And they did the whole thing like that, which it is impressive to hear somebody do it off the top of their head, but you kind of need to try and um, tell the story. I mean, the, the guy I heard that really influenced how I tried to do it was. Um, a boy for the uh, Chester Caledonian um, Society, Don Duncan, and he, he used to teach folk how to do public speaking, and he was one of the best, he, he had it down to a fine art, and um, you can Chester Caledonian, there was a lot of Scotch lads, a lot of boys from the North East, but let's face it, the biggest percentage were Englishmen from Ch uh, Cheshire, and um, there was a few Welsh boys obviously, but you can, Don had Abdi absolutely drawn into the story, despite the dialect, the, the, the language being in Scots, um, and a lot of going over their heads. He was such a good storyteller that he had Abdi in the palm of his hand at the end. And I, I do not tell a lie when I would say he would get a stand innovation every single time he did it. So, so Don Duncan was the man. There you go. Right, Shona, are yeah. you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I don't care how you mind all that, Paul. Yeah, body mind is per body yeah. minded perseverance. For the past couple of weeks, you've been going out for walks. Well, you're good walking anyway, but he's been running it in his head. Uh, so I've got a couple of hellos. Paige Graham in Nova Scotia is joining us. Hello, Paige. And Graham and Jill Bruce for Darland. Hello, both. So, uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> uh, Ian Murray thinks a Cairn Gorm. Liz Court thinks a small quake. And Gordon Muir thinks the key stain of the brig. Sorry, That's yeah. clever, but it's, it's like, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gordon. Uh, so, Fitz of Fusky. I'll put it up and let Abdi see it. Fitz of Fusky. Uh, Ian Russell thinks Glenn Glassach. Odd thinks Tesco's offer. Ian Murray thinks Balvini, Frank Ribbons, Tober Mori, Anne Reardon thinks McCallan, 60 year old. <laughs> I suited my league price wise. Uh, even, okay. even if we're still going out gigging, it's still out of price, uh, price tag. Uh, and Graham Bruce thinks Fetter Cairn because of the connection with Burns's father, which is clever, yeah. but it's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, folks. Sorry, sorry. Disappointing. Just telling it as it is. Uh, right, I'm going to sing. Oh, Paul, can you maybe pass up that wee bit that's yes. doing there? Thank you. So, I'm going to sing a couple of songs just now. Uh, this first one is uh, a song called The Slave's Lament. Can't I even mind for I first heard this, actually. I've kent it for 
a long, long time. Someone's rattling in a wood burning stove. I'd like to this. Do you think it's a bird? No, I don't no. think it can be. Maybe it's just a bit windy. The wind about it that time, and it lasts a big hoodie cut off. Or maybe nah, it's an no, owl. No, maybe no. it's a hoolet. Uh, anyway, uh, so I, I, I can't mind when I first heard this. I've got a feeling it might have been Isla St. Clair, actually. Um, so I'm going to sing this one. Um, actually, there's there was a story that Burns actually never put his name to this, but it was in his manuscripts, I think, so folk assume that he wrote it. Um, and there is a story that when he was in Edinburgh, he overheard the tune coming off of a slave ship and then he wrote words to it. I don't care if that's right or no, it's a nice story. But actually, Scotland... Um, anti-slavery groups were actually really, really strong in Scotland in the 18th century. At Burns's time, I think there was over 60 anti-slavery societies in Scotland. So, well, on the other side of the coin, um, half the buildings half in the, the merchant buildings city in were, merchant also were city. built on the slave trade. Well, tobacco yeah, and the uh, sugar, but half the back yeah. had slaves. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a slave's lament. <clears throat> It was in sweet Senegal that my foes did me enthrall. For the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh, torn from that lovely shore, and must never see it more. And alas, I am. Weary, weary, oh, torn from that lovely shore, and must never see it more. And alas, I am weary, weary, oh, all on that charming coast. Is no better snow and frost like the lands of Virginia, Virginia? Oh, their streams forever flow and their flowers forever blow. And alas, I am weary, weary. Their streams forever flow, and the flowers forever blow. And alas, I am weary, weary, oh. This burden I must bear, while the cruel scourge I fear, and Oh, Virginia, Virginia, oh, and I think on friends most dear, with a bitter, bitter tear, and alas, I am weary, weary, oh, and I think on friends most dear, with a bitter, Better tears. And alas, I am weary, weary, oh. It was in sweet Senegal that my foes did me enthrall. For the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh. Torn from that lovely shore And must never see it more And alas, I am weary, weary, oh Torn from that lovely shore And must never see it more and alas, I am weary, weary, oh. 
believe it's lent. Oh, thank you. It's a <coughs> kicker of a tune, like. Yes. I've had a couple of. Sorry, I'm just. Box guesses. Oh, yeah. What's in the box? What's in the box? Right. What's Sandy in the box? White thinks it's a shot glass. Mm -hmm. um, Rosie Robertson, for Up in the Ebony Arms, yep. thinks it's possibly the least favourite uh, chocolate for the selection box. I like, we've still got that mid January. That's all been eating for ages, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> and on a similar sort of tone, um, Joe Aitken thinks the whiskey is old Pultney for last week. And Tommy Webster thinks it's leftover whiskey. And I just. It's not like what's left what's over left whiskey. Over whiskey isn't what's it? left like over chocolate and left over whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Uh, I'm gonna do one more set just now. This is a uh, set of three burn songs. I think I've done this in live in the lounge before. Oh, sorry, I've got a right snuffery nose, and I've got no hunkies. But it's all right, fine. Uh, so this is a song. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry, I'm just gonna. That's quite rude. Sorry, I'm giving you back my snuggery hunky ball. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do three We Burn songs. Um, the first song is called Rut and Roar and Willy, and it was a traditional song, and Burns put the second verse to it. And then there's another song after that called Robin Shure and Hirst. And then to finish off, uh, it's an old Fifeshire fishing song called uh, Hike Cathru Cathru or Up with the Carls and Dies Out. <clears throat> Oh, rattle and roar and willy, oh, he had to the fair for to sell his fiddle and buy some other wear, but pert and we has fed all the salt here blunt as he. Oh, rattle and roar and willy, you're welcome him to me. Oh, will he come sell your fiddle, come sell your fiddle so fine. Oh, will he come sell your fiddle and buy a pint of wine. If I was to sell my fiddle, the world would think I was mad. For money's a rent and day, my fiddle and I he had as I and by Crochal and a tunnel, he kick it then. A rattle and roar, and Willie was sitting at yon bird then, sitting at yon bird then among the company. Oh, rattle and roar, and Willie, you're welcome him to me. Oh, Willie, come sell your fiddle, come sell your fiddle, so fine. Willie, come sell your fiddle and buy a pint of wine. If I was to sell my fiddle, the world would think I was mad. For money's a rent and day, my fiddle and I he had. Rob and shoe. And hearst, I sure we him fint a huke die. Yet I stack by him, Robin sure and hearst. I sure we him fint a huke die. Yet I stack by him, I get up to dance to our power by Platon at his daddy's yet. Who oh, are met me but Robin, Robin sure and hearst. I sure we him fint a huke die. Yet I stack by him was na Robin. Bold, though he was a cutter, played me sick a tarak, and me the elders, Doctor Robin Shure and Hirst. I sure we him fint a huke die, yet I stuck by him. Robin promised me, oh his winter of it all, faith he had but three goose feathers and a wet all. Robin Shure and Hirst. I sure we him fint a huke die, yet I stuck by him. Robin Shure and Hirst. I sure we him fint a huke die, yet I stack by him up with the curls a dies, a tan a lot of a cave and the kimmers a largo and the lassies a leave and hike through ke through for we him a call a do, hike through ke through for we him a call a do. We he tales to tell and we he songs to sing, we he pennies to spend and we he pints to bring. I ke through ke through for we he muckle a do, I ke through ke through for we he muckle a do. We'll live our lives and then they come a hen, let them do the like and spend the gear they win. I ke through ke through for we he muckle a do, I ke through ke through for we he muckle a do. Up with the curls a dies, a tan a lots a buck haven and the kimmers a largo and the lassies a leave and I ke through ke through for we. We him a call a do, I ke through ke through for we him a call a do, I ke through ke through for we him a call a do, I ke through ke through for we him a call a do. We set burn songs. Yeah. Right. Good. Well. Are you doing another set? Or are you? No, I don't think. I think okay. We've, I think we've had enough of us. That's <laughs> okay. um. I won't come and sit down though. I won't sit down. And roll. I well, it is quarter past, I suppose. Yeah. So. So, oh, it will probably do is, but maybe just play a set together just to finish. Well, we we'll better do what's in the box and fit the skin. We've got to get all these um, the, the kind of weekly favourites. Yes. So, for a start. What's in the box? 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 What's 
in the box. Nobody was right. No. That eye just pleases me no end for a, <laughs> a fox abdi. Um, Burns themed, so I'm telling you for this is. Um, the closest one we got was when they said someone out of cardboard, but for this is. Now, this has been <laughs> wrapped up for quite a while. The rubber band that was, was um, wrapping it up um, felt a bit when I took a book out, but this is a small book of Burns poetry, and uh, I think it is just poems, but it was my granny's. But I think she got it for somebody else, so this maybe goes quite far back. But it's it's a lovely thing. It's kind of very delicate, but know. it's got look. There's Tom a shunt. There's Tom looking in the kirk. So it's got all these um, illustrations all the way through, Lovely. and that it's not just the fact it was my granny's and it's been in the family for a long time. But um, what I like about that that kind of tells a tale in that. It's the kind of thing that when Scots immigrated, they took with them all over the world, actually. Um, yeah. Bibles in the works of Bo uh, Robert Burns. And um, yeah, that's a common thing that was carried <coughs> with folk. And because um, his work is just so, um, it's, it, it just is Scotland. I mean, he's one of the most influential poets and most celebrated. There's no a poet in the world that's celebrated as much, which says probably a lot about how many Scots um, have emigrated and gone out of the world and, and made um, careers and lived in countries. The only country in the world, folks, that doesn't have a burn supper is North Korea. Which, Surprise, <laughs> I mean, I'm not in, really in a hurry to go, but I, I did think, wouldn't that be great if kind of, that particular national border was breached by the works of Burns and, <laughs> and he thought, oh, this is really good, this actually, we should have a Burns supper. <laughs> and um, the spirit of um, kind of brotherhood uh, brought Abdi together. But anyway, Burns, mm -hmm. very influential. There's only, only statues of Queen Victoria and those of a religious nature, as in Jesus or Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary Magdalene that kind of thing. They're the only statues that there's more of in the world than Robert Burns, which is amazing. Yeah. We've got a crack in Aberdeen, there's quite yeah. a lot in Scotland, but uh, Central Park, there is um, a statue of Robert Burns in Vancouver, and I can places in Canada, uh, sorry, not Canada, uh, New Zealand and Australia have. So, um, yeah, he's celebrated because he's, uh, he's just bloody excellent. So there you go. <laughs> but that wee book, I thought, I'm sorry he didn't get it right, but that's what that is. It's, a, it's an old family wee book that's designed to be carried we you on your water you go in your pooch, um, your pocket, so. so I was going to say also your granny had a copy of the Merry Muses. The only <laughs> two people, the only ah. two people, that, if you don't know the Merry Muses, um, as well as collecting a lot of, of songs and writing poems and songs, Robert <laughs> Burns also had a wee side venture in really rude and dirty songs and poems. Uh, and they're brilliant. They're really, really funny. So if you're say... easily offended, I wouldn't read them. <laughs> so... I remember. I wouldn't say that a side adventure. He just no, it's not. You know, folk, I mean. folks' taste and uh, habits were a wee bit bawdier at that time. Yeah. The Victorians, Victorians made up the old time. Uh, There's <laughs> no question about that, like, but yeah. Know? But uh, the only two people that I know that ever had uh, a copy of the Merry Muses was your granny and my wee granny Donaldson. And my wee granny Donaldson had it wrapped up in a brown paper bag at the back of the bureau. We didn't know she had it. It's so not for children. It's not for children. But I if could hear a, a, a bit of one, but I'd, no, I'd, I'd probably my, my so mother would be scandalised. This is, this, is this is my Burns Bible, the Canning Gate Burns, and the Merry Muses are at the back of this, if you're interested. It's a great, a great I will thing. say they're not in there. No, no, they're not some, all there. Some of them are a wee bit. No, some of them are a wee bit. A wee bit rock. Are thing. you wanting to do a long sign and then do the deal? I, oh, I, I, no, I was oh, going to say, the whiskey, very quickly, um, tell you for that is, it's Glen Cadam. Which is fake. Joey, Ken, you should have gotten that. You're close enough. Yeah, well, it's he's the closest, probably, with the folk that's watching, um, he'd be the closest. But Glenn Cadam, um, it's actually really nice, and I've never had it before. I've got it in Strachan's in a bind. Uh, because, well, I'm, I'm sh basically finished, we're in full lockdown again. I'm shielding, so I avoid going into the shops, or, well, Shona will let me go into the shops. No, but I'm that's, a, that's fine. <laughs> so I, I left it in her hands, and she came out with it, and I'm looking, gosh, I'm dying. I think I've ever tried it before, but it's very nice. I even watched, there was a German man who did a taste, um, taste on it, and he, it's a regular thing he does, and he certainly can't stop it. I found it quite amusing. 
and he was he was nosing it up and he hmm yes floral notes mm, mm, num, num. Num, num, um, num. Um, oh tropical fruit I was like oh that sounds like bacon to me like <laughs> <laughs> but one, one thing he said for for the cost of the the whiskey compared to the quality of the, the experience of drinking it and the smell he said it seemed to be the, the best valued whiskies you could you could think of for a single malt. We'll so. wait and see what Gordon Muir thinks. That's that he does. Gordon might say it's rubbish. Well, Gordon, I would, if you were <laughs> going to say that, I'm going to argue with you because I've enjoyed every every drop. Every so movie. Uh, so um, let's finish up with a song together. Since it's Burns Night, and probably, well, not probably, it is his most famous song. I Burns although it, it's what he didn't. I mean, it was an old song from Burns. Um, added verses to it. Yeah. He would have described it, he improved if it existed and added verses. But at Robert Burns' time, and he was born in um, 1759 and died in 1796. At that time, it was considered an old song. An old song. So, so yeah. we're going to do Odd Lang Sign and then we'll do the deals of all the excitement. Oh, yeah. that right? But we'll say um, cheerio before We'll say then. cheerio before that anyway. Um, but if you want, you can put your hands up. I'm just going to do the normal version. There is an old... Uh, an old tune that goes to it but just for ease so everybody can sing along we'll do the, the version that everybody knows or if you want to put little hand emojis so we're all holding hands that would be nice <laughs> we're doing this virtually we're virtually this. holding hands can we play it? starting now should old acquaintance be forgot and never thought Calder has messed so far, he's trumped our day. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, well, that's our Burns night nearly Oi. over. Just got one more tune. If you have enjoyed it and you feel bung, <laughs> feel like bunging something into the tip jar, it's www.paypal.me forward slash Paul Anderson Shona Don, if you do fancy Cheers, it. Cheers, folks. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining us on our special Burns night. We'll be back next week for number 46. Aye, so we're finished. But we'll be back. We'll be back. It's a bit like the, the Aberdeen um, motto is a bon accord, but there's a... It's a happy and to And I think, happy to meet, sorry to part, happy, happy to, to meet, meet again. again. So we'll, happy to meet you again next week. Yeah, Thanks. 8 o'clock, the usual time, live for the lounge. How a cramar. Aye, so take care, uh, yeah. keep your heads doing, because actually I've heard of a couple of folk I can that are very close to folk that's died of COVID this yeah. week. Lots of folk. Cut got it. It's definitely serious. Don't listen to the folk that say oh, it's it's just the flu and there's nothing to worry about. It's definitely something to take care of. So we want you all to be here at the Next other end week. so we can see you. In, well, in here, fully. In fact, I think we should hear a proper Life of the Lounge concert in the McRobert Hall in Tarlin yeah. once this is our hour and you can all come and maybe I uh, might not manage from Japan and. I well, she know. might. She might. She can come with your legs. Obd, Obdi's welcome. Can hear the spare room. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's finish off then. Yeah. We... Okay, we're going to finish with the deals of all the excisemen because he might come and take my whiskey or whatever, which I'm not going to want. So <laughs> anyway, the deals of all the excisemen. <laughs>
Right, thanks folks. Nice to see yeah. you. Take care and we'll see, see you, you next week. week. All the best.